My name is Jackin Kadambi, artist name Jaenda. Uh, this is our family business, the art kiosk. My name is George Ngeri, the son of a Mesa, with an artistic name is Nkoba. Uh, we are the art kiosk. This is our business that uh, we started, majorly dealing with the contemporary art and the framing. Ah, okay. Yeah, these are my artworks. When did you start? I started, that will be... Were you an artist? No, I was not an artist actually. Inspiration from him, because he come from work and come and quinta the shirts and make the house, the, the living room will be chaos, the painting and everything. So I had to join him, be the artist. When did you guys meet? Oh, 2009. I was working in a bank. I went to open an account. <laughs> I ended up opening two accounts. <laughs> him and the other money account. Yeah. The business has been existent for, I can say, from 2014, but then it was in 2014 the way it is today. In 2014, it was just on this road down down there, on this uh, Loretto Ridge Road, but then with a board outside, just looking outside. But over time, it has evolved to a kiosk that is more organized. There were so many circumstances that forced us, uh, forced us to form the kiosk. I used to be an artist in the house after work, but then I had nowhere to show my work. The place that I could take to galleries, you, I used to find a lot of resistance. I think they, want, they did not understand my work. So from that point I was like, for me I understand my work, I love it. It is unique to myself. And I'm like, why don't they take it to their galleries? So that resistance forced me to come with my own way of exposing my work to the world. Kenyan wise understanding of kiosk is a, a, a Mabati structure somewhere on the road in a squeezed place on a road reserve that uh, supports micro entrepreneurs and uh, startups. We had been having this idea of starting our own business over time but then remember you need money. When it came to money, that time when we started this thing, literally we had zero, zero funds, but we had a lot of ideas. So we started from where we, where we could start, that is making our small step from the roadside, and then eventually now we're in the kiosk, but we know the journey still continues. This is a piece that I've created, uh, <coughs> that is called uh, Reinventing Yourself. Reinventing yourself comes from my own personal situation whereby there was a time I used to work in the corporate world but circumstances led me to find myself in the wider world where I had to sit down and look at myself and what do I need to do with myself? Should I sit and uh, depress myself that I one time was in the corporate world or not? So I had to come and then so most of my pieces I don't prefer to show the facials. I prefer to understand what goes in our brains. That's why you see there is a tree here that, and that tree it is leafless, signifying that it is the end of one thing and then there is a new life that is coming out of that, uh, that tree because every tree produces fruits and in case it dies it can only live again through the seed it puts in its fruits. People don't want to understand that once you're done with something, you're preparing yourself or you're setting yourself for a new venture, either by default or by choice. I believe as nature, first you invent yourself, then you reinvent yourself and you keep on re reinventing yourself to remain relevant to you first and then to other people. Don't reinvent yourself to fit into other people. I'm going to make a blueprint and reinventing yourself. The 
name of the character that I created is not one in the year 2009. She's called Chosiku. Uh, and Chosiku, she has uh, lips of love. And why did I use uh, love as a lips? Some call it flappy lips, but then when you look at it carefully, they are lips of love. Whatever comes of our, our mouth should not be hatred, but something to pull us together. Because you realize the world, I think either by nature or by circumstances, people tend to be mean. So, Chosiku is a character that talks about the peri urban ladies of my surrounding. So, she has several personalities. She has several, I can't say that she's uh, this type, but she has several of those because if I limit Chausiku, I can't be able to express what I see fully. So, Chausiku, depending on the situation, she takes different personalities. She can be a slave queen today. Tomorrow, she can wake up to be a preacher. <laughs> the other day, she wake up to be that nagging lady in a nice way. So, <laughs> I, don't, I don't want to limit her. I want her to express herself in the best way she can. She's my grandmother. And she's the biggest inspiration. My grandmother taught, she taught me most about you and how to take care of it. And the benefits nature can give us. But then, that's why you see in my people, I put trees, I put flowers, I put uh, things you easily find in nature, butterflies, animals. So as a human being, you never be rigid. So that's what she taught me. So whichever the circumstances, either fit in or just get out. My understanding of nature, I believe nature is part of us. And if you tell me to explain myself, I call myself nature. I'm part of the nature. I cannot be anything above nature because it is my surrounding that has given me all this that I have. So without nature, I'm nothing. Applying the color, the ink, now I'll go and transfer the image on my paper. that it is even then I don't have a printing press so I'm the printing press that's why I say as a human being I'm the most flexible if I don't have a machine I'll find a way of doing it without that particular machine so wood which was for a rubber stamp that I used for pressing yeah 